the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, gowning such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. I beg your pardon, Dr. Gillespie. Did you say Parker wasn't in your office? Not only did I say she isn't in my office, Diana, but I've dialed my office three times in the last 15 minutes and still no answer. Three times? That's peculiar. No more peculiar than Parker is. But find her for me, will you? Mm -hmm. And tell her uh, to bring me Mrs. Taylor's case history up to the biochem lab. Well, I'll certainly try, Dr. Gillespie, just as soon as I can get off the reception desk. Good, good. And ten minutes ago isn't too soon. Well, uh, Bessie, uh, have you seen Parker recently? Why, yes, Miss Vernon. She just left the diet kitchen a minute ago. Oh, thanks, dear. You get out of here, you boy! Parker, Parker, for goodness sake. Don't stand there, Diana. Help me get this cat out of the building. Uh, Parker, will you skip the cat and get into the office so Dr. Gillespie can have Mrs. Taylor's case history up in the biochem lab before he has to be scraped off the ceiling? Well, as if I had anything to do with a stray cat being in here. You'd imagine I... Yes, uh, yes, you can't you. Don't you dare go in Dr. Gillespie's office. Meow. Come here, you fugitive from a back alley. Did you hear me? I said, come here. If you don't get off that desk, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll... Why, the great horn spoon, Parker. How long do you think you're going to keep me waiting for... Parker, one in ton. It's, um... Um, it's a cat, Dr. Gillespie. Well, 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 a cat. A friend or just one of your relatives? Oh. I'm sorry, Parker. What? Well, naturally, I'm sorry. I understand your interest in animals. Uh, because your next job, you'll probably be lucky if you're working for a veterinary. Now, you see here, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, I'm not... Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, oh. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Uh, how about coming over to Sullivan's for a while? Uh, Dr. Kildare, would you please tell this old... Well, now, Doctor... A new patient? Now, wait a minute, Jimmy. Wait a minute. <laughs> there you are, Dr. Gillespie. I'm glad I found you at last. <laughs> Oh, no. What's the matter, Dr. Carew? You're pale. Don't you like cats? I cannot abide cats. They make my skin crawl. And until this cat is out of here, we'd better go over to my office. You come along, too, Dr. Kildare. Uh, I'm busy. I, I'm making a new prognosis on Mrs. Taylor in 504. Dr. Gillespie, this is... Hmm. Well, I guess it's ours not to reason why, ours just to do and... Uh... <clears throat> <laughs> Come on, Dr. G. Over to Dr. Carew's office. <clears throat> now, gentlemen, have you ever heard of Oliver M. W. Van Meter? Oliver M. W. Van Meter? Well, who hasn't heard of him in New York? Just oozing money. <laughs> Not only oozes money, Oliver oozes influence. Oh, Oliver, eh? Uh, well, yes, yes. Uh, we met at a dinner party last night. <laughs> but we spent almost an hour together alone talking confidentially about Mr. Van Meter's health. Not only mm. money and influence, but health, too. Now, there's a lucky man. Gentlemen, it's a very, very strange case. <laughs> but on my insistence, and upon my professional advice, mind you, he's coming to Blair Hospital. And gentlemen... That is what I want to talk to you about. Well? Mr. Van Meter suffers from a most peculiar melody. Most peculiar. Every Monday, every Monday of the year, his eyes start to water. Mm. Then his nose starts running. 
And by Tuesday, he has a horrible case of asthma. Well, what's so strange about that? Probably an allergic reaction or something. Allergic reaction. Have you ever heard of an allergy that was able to read a calendar so that it could get started every Monday? And well... Uh, 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 well ju- just a minute, Carew. What happens after Tuesday? Ah, there is the strangest part. By Wednesday, the asthmatic condition starts subsiding. By Thursday, Mr. Van Meter is completely well again. And then Monday, each and every Monday, the cycle starts all over. That's unusual, all right, but still probably an allergic upset. Well, I've practiced medicine too long to make snap judgments, Jimmy, especially before I've seen the patient. I stand corrected, Doctor. And I'll bet you the six-course lunch at Sullivan's with an extra plate of rice pudding that no allergy recurs every Monday and then fades away. You just made a bet, Dr. Gillespie, with an extra rice pudding and an extra pitcher of cream. Mm. When does Mr. Van Meter check in, Dr. Cole? He's coming this Sunday, so as to be here for observation when the malady starts developing Monday. Oh, Jimmy, not this weekend again. But, Diane, I, I just told you, I... But, you know, I made this bet with Dr. Gillespie and... and... I bet you're breaking our day just because you want to meet the great Oliver M. W. Van Meter. You ought to know by this time, sweetie. There's no one I'd rather be with than you. Hmm. Here comes Parker. What's that she's toting? What in the world are you doing with that, Parker? <laughs> no, that... Uh-huh. Oh, uh, you must mean this. Yes. Let me see that a minute. Ah, evaporated milk for baby's formula. Parker, exactly what have you been doing with your spare time? Well, maybe if you had to put up with Dr. Gillespie, you'd need evaporated milk, too. Oh, is that something new? Evaporated milk for babies to uh, cure ulcers and in case lots at that? Oh, 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 <laughs> doctor, of course not. I uh, use it on my face for these, um, these crows... Feet. Well, what kind of a crow have you got that eats with his feet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, sometimes I wish I worked with you instead of that old bear I picked. <laughs> oh, poor Parker. She's such a wonderful person at heart. What she has to put up oh, with. Oh, you're a wonderful person too, Miss Werner. Oh. And uh, you have to put up with me. Jimmy, you better keep your mind on Mr. Van Meter. Oh? For the present, that is. If there is anything at all you want, I'll, uh, Mr. Van Meter, just press that little call bell right over your head, and you will get some of the service for which Blair Hospital is so justly famous. Thanks. What I want, you can't get in the hospital. I beg your pardon? Look at this item here. Oh. <laughs> I don't recall seeing that when I read the paper this morning. Well, what paper do you read? You mean there's a difference? Well, certainly there's a difference. Yes, I, I, I see we... Oh, Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Kildare. Do come in and meet Mr. Van Meter. Oliver M. W. Van Meter. Delighted, Mr. Van Meter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Kildare and I would like to start by getting a case history, Mr. Van Meter. Uh, I told Carew the entire case history the other night, and... and, and I, uh, uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. In the lab, every one, and not one of them is positive. Well, that should be pretty solid evidence that it isn't an allergy, then, shouldn't it? No, unfortunately not, because when I made the nasal smear for eosinophiles, it showed Van Meter's definitely allergic to something. Some unusual thing we just don't know about and can't find. Oh, this is dreadful. Dr. Gillespie, can't you suggest something? <laughs> yes. Give him a box of face tissues for his sneezes and send him home. Oh. Dr. Gildare, isn't there something you can do? Well, there is, but I'm afraid you're not going to like it, Dr. Carew. I'm not? It seems that whatever Mr. Van Meter is allergic to is some substance we haven't got in our lab. Something the medical profession probably doesn't even know about. Such as what, Jimmy? I don't know. I'm starting to think it's something here in New York. Perhaps something in the air of the city. Uh. You mean there's no possibility of finding it? None that I know of. So, in all fairness to the patient, and since... He... Who in the Board of Regents tell me to do the same thing the day after? We 
return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Gillespie, not alone have you been my friend, but you've been my mentor. You know that. Ah, mentor. My Aunt Bessie's bustle. When you came into the hospital, you were wet behind the ears, and someone had to take care of you. I appreciate that. And you're still wet behind the ears. Hmm. In fact, what you did with Van Meter was all wet. Oh, please, let's not start that song and dance again, arguing whether he has a bad cold or an allergy. Oh, that's not what I mean. Why don't you face the facts? Carew was so tickled getting Van Meter into the hospital, he wasted no time letting the Board of Regents know all about it. Oh, and I suppose the Board has nothing better to do now than wonder why Van Meter isn't here anymore. Jimmy, the fact is, somebody dropped a golden egg into their basket, and you're the one who's thrown it away. Well, I'm sorry, but I did it for the good of the patient. Yeah? But did you consult me? Well... Did you ask whether I thought he should leave New York? No. I suppose I should have. But with you feeling so miserable... Oh, and... sure, yeah, I feel miserable, all right, and... It's from that cold Van Meter sneezed all over oh, me. Oh, I'll be reasonable. If he did have a cold, how could you contract it that soon? How possibly? <laughs> well, you heard Carew. Van Meter has influence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but right now there's nothing so funny about that. When I see a patient racked with spasms and gasping for breath the way Van Meter did last Tuesday, I... I'm afraid I suffer as much as he does. Uh, how do you think I feel? I must have spent 35 years in this hospital for some reason. His breathing was so labored. Clenching his fists, twisting in agony to get his breath. Well, we'll see. This is Tuesday, and if Van Meter does what he promised me, he'll be telegraphing from upstate and letting us know what happened. <laughs> Jimmy, I hope Carew and the regions don't kick you out before you pay for that lunch. Well, Dr. G, if they do kick me... <clears throat> oh, hello, Parker. A telegram just came for you, Doctor. Thank you, Parker. Hmm. Uh-huh. A night letter from Oliver M. W. Van Meter. No? Uh-huh. Is he all out of face tissues already? I'll say he isn't. Listen to this. Quote, this is the first Monday in three years I've had no symptoms or discomfort. Congratulations, Doctor, and my eternal thanks. <laughs> well, Dr. G, it is just about uh, lunchtime. By the tarnation, I can't figure it out. Van Meet is well, and I have still got my... <coughs> uh, my cold. <laughs> Parker. Yes, Doctor. I feel so good about this telegram, I'm going to buy you a whole case of that evaporated baby milk. Uh, evaporated what? Oh, evaporated... Oh, nothing, Doctor. Uh, nothing at all. Uh, Dr. Kildare, congratulations on your diagnosis of the Van Meter case. I, th- You should have waited, Parker. Another telegram just came for Jimmy. Another? Yes. How popular can you get? Well, maybe your grateful patient wired you $100,000 in partial appreciation. Maybe. Yeah, give me that. Hmm? <laughs> but a great horn spoon, grateful patient. Not only opens my personal <laughs> telegram, laughs in my face. Dr. Gillespie, what does it say? <laughs> I'm laughing so much I can't read it. Oh, <laughs> this is rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good night, doctor. Bye, shut up. Would you please let me read that? Oh, here, Jimmy. Mm. Well, I'll be blasted. This just doesn't make sense. Well, for heaven's sake, what doesn't make sense? Hmm. <coughs> Let's see. Yes, 
first telegram from Van Meter was a ninth letter sent Monday, and this is a straight telegram sent today, Tuesday. Yes, and? Upstate at Lake George, Van Meter was all right on Monday, but 24 hours later, on Tuesday, the whole thing started up again exactly the way it did here, except one day later. Well. Is there a doctor in the house? And if there is, tell him Dr. Kildare is taking me to Sullivan's for lunch. Jimmy, my boy, I can't tell you when I've enjoyed a lunch so much. Ah, uh, yeah, that's good. Go on, eat your pudding. Uh, no thanks. Doctor, not only is your slip showing, hmm? your slip in diagnosis, of course, but you're not even diagnosing yourself properly. To coin a very old phrase of yours, Doctor, what the tarnation are you talking about? Do you know? By the ever-living... Uh-oh. Oh, I'm glad we enjoyed our lunch before he got here. Oh, so here you are. Well, I wish when you gentlemen leave the hospital, you'd let someone know where you're going. Parker no. Well, if she did, she wasn't around. And anyhow, the door of your office was locked. Now, see here, Dr. Gildare. What's all this about a telegram from Oliver? Yeah. Yeah, here. Here, read it for yourself. Uh, oh. Oh. Well, Dr. Kildare, now what do you propose doing? There's only one thing I can think of. Cutting your own throat, Doctor? No. No, but I'm going to telephone Mr. Van Meter Thursday when his new attack has subsided and ask him to come back down here. Back to Blair Hospital. Back to... Dr. Yes. Kildare, you don't think for a moment he'd come back after you gave him the... the... well, the bums rush. I don't know, Dr. Carew. I only know that if Mr. Van Meter can be cured, I'm going to cure him. If I have to work till I have a long gray beard. Believe me, Mr. Van Meter, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate your coming back to Blair Hospital and giving us another chance. What have you got to appreciate? I came back here because your Dr. Kildare is about the only person sufficiently sympathetic to be interested in my case for more than the fees. Uh, uh yes, <clears throat> yes, yes. I, I, I want you to know that we're all sympathetic. Every last one of us here at... Blair Hospital. Now, don't try to butter me up, Carew. But, but, uh, Dr. Kildare and Dr. Gillespie... Gillespie? You send that old walrus in here again and I'll beat him over the head with this Sunday newspaper. Comic section wrote of your book review and off! Well, I, I, I must admit that... that uh, oh, Dr. Kildare, come right in. Your patient's ready for you. Mr. Van Meter, I can't start to tell you how sorry I am it didn't work out. Well, I don't believe in interfering between a doctor and his patient. If there's anything you want, uh, Oliver, uh, just let me know. Hmm. Well, you know why I came back here? No, but I know why I wanted you to come back. I know you can be cured, and I'd like to do the curing. Well, I thought you had cured me when Monday came around at Lake George, and I was fit as a fiddle. Yeah. But why did it happen at Lake George on Tuesday? I guess it takes the germs the whole day to come up from New York. <laughs> Maybe that's <laughs> it. And as far as Lake George goes, you can have it. Why, if I hadn't had the glue bulletin mail up to me, I'd have been lost. What? Oh, wait a minute. You had your Sunday newspaper mailed up to you? Yes. Mr. Van Meter, um, this is the Sunday edition of the Globe Bulletin right here. Is that right? Yeah. Mm hmm. In New York, you read this paper every day and Sundays, too. Mm. But you never broke out except on Mondays down here. Monday, the day following the Sunday edition. Of course, but look here. The today. only exception in three years was this past week when you received the Sunday edition of the Globe Bulletin by mail on Monday, right? Mm, yes, I suppose so. And as ridiculous as it sounds, I'll bet you right now you're the one man in a million who's allergic to rotogravure ink. The ink the Globe Bulletin uses in its Sunday supplement. Uh, I'm allergic to newspaper? You are. To Roderick of your ink? If I'm wrong, Mr. Van Meter, I'll eat the Globe Bulletin, hop along Cassidy, comic section, and all.
just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Hmm. <coughs> well, this is such a happy moment, gentlemen. It uh, certainly is for me. Well, goodbye again, Dr. Kildare, and uh, thanks to you too, Dr. Gillespie. I take back all the things I said about you. Uh, the only thing I want you to take back is this blasted cold you gave me. Oh, but how can it be a cold, Doctor, when you and Dr. Kildare both proved Mr. Van Meter was allergic to the road of gravure ink in the Sunday edition? Parker, <coughs> shut up. <coughs> well, uh, come along, uh, Oliver. I'll walk you down to your car. Yeah. Uh, goodbye. goodbye. Yes, goodbye. Well, Doctor... Not only do you owe me a lunch at Sullivan's, but you owe me the one you made me pay for prematurely. Compounded corruption, Jimmy. <laughs> How can a man eat when his head's choked up with a cold? <sniffs> Tarnation. Now, this tissue box is empty. I thought you kept your whole hoard of face tissue in the back of that double drawer in your desk. Oh, no, no. There's been none there for weeks now. I'll go right down to the pharmacy and get you some. Now, wait a minute, uh, Parker. There uh, were at least a dozen boxes. They can't all be used but, up. Uh, but, uh, now, uh, hold your horses, Parker. I'll take a look. Oh. Uh, oh. By the great horn spoon. A cat in my desk. And a blanket. Parker. Come back here. Locking the office and evaporated baby milk for your crow's feet, eh, Parker? Now, Doctor, you've simply got mm. to give me a chance. I gave you a chance to nothing. I'm going to take this cat and be... <coughs> well, Dr. Gillespie, now are you convinced you haven't got a cold? Why, even a second-year med student could tell what's wrong with you. You're allergic to cat's hair. Parker, I've wanted to do this for a long time. But now I'm going to wrap my fingers around your throat until rigor mortis sets in. Well, and I've wanted to do this for a long time, too. I'm quitting. Oh, no, you're not. You're fired. That's a fine way to treat me. And after she's given you the best years of her life for shame, Doctor. The only reason I hid the old kitten in the first place was because I couldn't catch it. And then when I heard Dr. Carew say cats made his skin crawl... I thought. Well. Nah, I don't care if Carew. Huh? Uh, <laughs> Carew, huh? Well, now, uh, maybe you got something there. <laughs> A new secret weapon. You bet she has, Dr. G. <laughs> Parker, honey, you sit down. You're not fired. You're just wonderful. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Paul Franklin and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Georgia Ellis, Wilms Herbert, and Margie List. Dick Joy speaking.